On this episode, experience the 15th anniversary of the Indiana Warbird Campaign. And learn a little bit about thermodynamics from the Flying Aces Club. Plus, take a look at how you can use the recently condensed safety code and new safety handbook. All that and more on this episode of AMA Air. Hello, and welcome to AMA Air, your source for modeling news. I'm Chris Savage. And I'm Erin Dobbs. The Pegot RC modelers will be holding a fall fun fly October 13th and 14th in Pegot, Arkansas. There will be electric combat, 3D demo flights, night flying contests, and more. Triple Creek RC will be hosting WAPFest 2018 in Riverview, Florida on October 13th. There will be open flying for any electric aircraft. Eagle Squadron RC will be holding Spook Fest October 4th through the 7th in Frazeeburg, Ohio. Any size, style, and type of aircraft is welcome, and a trainer plane with Buddy Box will be available. The Omaha Orbiting Eagles Contest 2018 will be held October 7th in Omaha, Nebraska. They'll be flying advanced and expert, as well as profile stunt and Nostalgia 30 stunt. Belmont RC Club is hosting the Charlie Noel Memorial Heli Fly on October 13th in Beaumont, Texas. All rotor aircraft are welcome to participate. The New England Great Pumpkin Ales Glider Festival will be held in West Kingston, Rhode Island on October 13th and 14th. The Rhode Island Soaring Club is hosting the event. For more information on these events or to find one in your area, you can check out the sanctioned event calendar in Model Aviation or at modelaircraft.org. I have a suggestion for these clubs. So after they get done flying, they need to set up a big outdoor movie theater and show the Great Pumpkin. That would be amazing. Right? I was just, I saw Spook Fest and I'm like, this is fantastic. We need like a Halloween themed kind of flying event in some way and that's an awesome way to do it. Exactly. Well, coming up, we're going to give you a science lesson from some members of the Flying Aces. Every journey starts somewhere. Our journey begins with imagination. And imagination can take us anywhere. Because the best journeys end with new beginnings. You only have about two weeks left to enter the AMA Foundation for the future sweepstakes. You could win a trip to AMA Expo West November 2nd through the 4th in California with travel and accommodations for one, free entry into the AMA Expo West, and a ride in Lady Alice, a full-scale P-51 Mustang. You can enter one time each week at amafoundation.modelaircraft.org slash sweepstakes. The House and Senate are currently pre-conferencing the FAA authorization bill an attempt to reauthorize the FAA before September 30th. The FAA authorization will include the Special Rule for Model Aircraft, Section 336, and while it still seems unlikely that FAA authorization will pass before the September 30th deadline, we are the closest that we have been to a long-term bill since Section 336 was enacted back in 2012. If the House and Senate are unable to reach a compromise on FAA authorization, we're likely to see a continuing resolution with the bill, meaning they'll extend the current FAA authorization and attempt for a long-term bill a few months from now, likely after the November elections. We'll continue to share updates on social media, through email, and at modelaircraft.org slash gov. AMA's Education Department has been awarded a $50,000 one-year grant from the Arconic Foundation. The Arconic Foundation has been an instrumental partner to AMA, and over the past 13 years, AMA has been the grateful recipient of several grants. This additional funding supports our public school educator STEM outreach efforts, as well as our UAS for STEM program, which we highlighted in the last episode of AMA Air. 
With Arconic support, we have been able to develop the AMA Alpha Free Flight Airplane and different kits that provide materials for Arconic volunteers, teachers, and community leaders to share STEM opportunities within aviation with students. We are grateful for this opportunity and look forward to continuing our partnership with the Arconic Foundation. If you've been around soaring or free flight enthusiasts, you've probably heard about thermals, but you may not understand the science behind them. Pat Murray and George Bredehoft from the Flying Aces were on site this summer and gave us a lesson in thermodynamics. Let's take a look. My name's George Bredehoft and I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan. I'm Pat Murray, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. And so the Flying Aces Club is a free flight rubber band powered club and we concentrate on nostalgia events based off of the Flying Aces magazine from the 30s and 40s. And uh, we were primarily uh, stick and tissue, they call it. Balsa stick construction covered with tissue paper. Uh, we do some endurance events and some scale events, and we've probably got about 40 different categories or so. And some of those events do include uh, like gas, engines, electric, things like that. So we got power scale that we can do. So we do put a little bit of everything into the club, but mainly it's focused on the rubber power. One, one of the things that helps us fly our airplanes is the, the current in the air. And um, when it's windy, we don't like to fly because that's really risky to our planes. But on a nice calm day like this, um, what's available to us are the thermals. And the thermals are warm air rising through the natural convection of the atmosphere. And you'll see on virtually every free, free flight contest, one of these streamers. This is just a piece of mylar attached to a really long pole. But what it can tell you is when the air is going up and when it's coming down. And since our, our contests are based on duration, we want the most air time we can get. And so we want, also want to take advantage of any help we can get. And if there's warm air rising, we want to launch that plane right into that uh, thermal and ride that thermal just like a surfer rides a wave. So the plane will just sit there and circle and go right on up and, and it'll do one of two things. It'll either come out of the thermal or it'll just keep going. <laughs> that's when uh, dethermalizers come in handy and that's a mechanical device to prevent it from getting caught in that thermal. You can either pop the tail so it causes airflow to change and brings the plane down. Or you can, a lot of people will pop the wing too. And it'll just change the angle just enough to where it disrupts the flight pattern. Right, it basically it stalls the aircraft. Yeah. Now another modern feature that goes along with using these streamer poles is you can also use this. It's a wind indicator and also a temperature gauge. And if you look for a, a sudden jump in air temperature, there's a good indication there might be a earth thermal coming through. So if you keep this handy before you launch and just wait for that right moment for that temperature just to rise like that, you might catch onto a wave. You don't want to launch when it's falling, but then if you start noticing it just climbing, 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 that's a, a good indication. Good indicator that there's some nice warm air there for you. You'll see that thing fall down, and now you see how that's rising up right now? That's a little bit of a bubble. That's not a bubble of warm air. That's not just the, the wind keeping it horizontal. When, when you see that streamer drop like this and then pick up like that. And especially turn 90 degrees like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, air, a thermal is kind of like a donut in the air. And it's just this circular donut going up. And it also has a rotation to it. So when it comes through, the cold air will rush towards it. It'll go down and then rush towards it and then the, be carried up in the thermal. So if you see this streamer pointing straight down and you feel current, that means that air is rushing down and somewhere around you, you don't know exactly where, there's a thermal that's going to suck that air right back up. To learn more about the Flying Aces and view their event calendar, visit flyingacesclub.com. Pat and George encourage anyone interested to contact the club or find an event to attend. Coming up, take a look at the Indiana Warbird Campaign's Salute to the Classics.
The 15th anniversary of the Indiana Warbird campaign took place here at the International Aeromodeling Center over Labor Day weekend. Let's learn more about this giant scale warbird and classic air show. Hello everybody, I'm Linda Crooks. And I'm Dennis Crooks, the CD of the uh, Indiana Warbird campaign. This happens to be the, the 15th year for this event in conjunction with AMA and uh, it's, it's growing every year and more and more popular. We started 15 years ago with 30 pilots and we are probably closer to 130 this year. Uh, the guys are wonderful. We always give the pilots credit because without them we wouldn't have a show. We enjoy every minute of it so we encourage people to come out and check us out, come fly, just have a good time because we're all about supporting the industry, the hobby, veterans and just all around patriotism. And we typically do uh, groupings of classics in World War I and World War II and then perhaps some jets. Uh, and we try to loosely at least follow the progression of history. And history is what we feel like our noontime show is all about. There are a limited number of full-size Corsairs, B-25s, and like that in the world. We can keep aviation history alive by coming out here with, with our giant scale radio control airplanes. And we can teach, we can show respect, and we can honor. And we want to say thank you to them as best we can. So we, we do different groupings and we try to do a little reenactment. Uh, this year we did Iwo Jima, the flag raising. Each year we do a little something different, but it's always as a great big thank you. We have vendors available. Uh, we, again, have shirts and things like that. And we just, like I said, what we want to do is say thank you. And the best way we can do that is by flying. This type of an event, of an event uh, continues to grow and expand. So we, we really appreciate the participants in, in these well, we have the, uh, the Alliance events, and they're all doing very well. There's a group of seven shows like this that's called the Warbird and Classic Alliance. They have different dates. They start in the 1st of June and go through the end of September. They are in multiple states, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. Uh, they're all basically like this, but they all have their own individual personalities. And we help each other, and uh, we just believe in each other. And they, the Alliance has proven to be a, uh, a very good thing to help get the word out about Warburg. So I don't know if you have been a part of the Indiana Warburg campaign, but I have for many years, so mm -hmm. it's near and dear to my heart. And uh, when you see the noontime air show, it's very patriotic, and you almost get a tear. Yeah, it, it does start to well up just a little bit when you watch that. It is a really, really fun event. It is. They do such a wonderful they job. Do. Coming up, we will tell you a little more about how you can use the improved safety code. Hi, my name is Lawrence Tugas. I'm the AMA District 10 Vice President. We're going to have a District 10 fly-in. We're going to hold it October 26th through the 28th in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Our host hotel is the Santa Fe Station Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. It's only about 10 minutes from the field. They've given AMA members a super deal. They also have secure parking. Please uh, act today, reserve your hotel space, come to the AMA District 10 fly-in and have a good time. AMA members have been flying safely for over 80 years, and we value our safety code. Earlier this year, we condensed the safety code and created a safety handbook to go along with it. While you may be aware of this change, maybe you're unsure how it impacts you. If you're relatively new to model aviation and the AMA, or if you're introducing the hobby to someone else, the safety code provides a brief introduction to the basic safety rules. This short document is easy to post at a flying site or to hand out to potential new pilots. The safety handbook, on the other hand, breaks down detailed information for different sectors of the hobby. This is great for those who are interested in trying a new discipline within the hobby, but are unsure of the safety guidelines, or for those who are just ready to learn more about what's possible. 
The safety handbook can be saved as a PDF or printed. Both documents can easily be found at modelaircraft.org. Just click Safety Guide at the top of any page for the safety handbook. To see the safety code, hover over Media and Resources or expand the menu on mobile and click Safety Code. Before we close the show, we have some important news. To all of the loyal watchers of AMA Air, I will be leaving the show. But no worries, I'm not leaving AMA. I have had the opportunity to meet some really great people and members while co-hosting AMA Air. And the support that both Chris and I have received has been amazing. It's important to me that someone else have the chance to experience all of the great things that I have gotten to do as the host of this show. I go back through old episodes and see how much we have grown and how much this team puts into the show, and I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to be a part of it all. Trust me though, I know the production team pretty well, so don't be surprised if I'm asked to come back to fill in occasionally. Well, Aaron, we are looking really forward to doing auditions, but these are gonna be some big shoes to fill, and uh, I've had a lot of fun hosting the show with you and, and kind of getting things up and going. So I think that uh, you've helped us get off to an awesome start and uh, I'm really excited to see what the future holds. Well, just filming this show today has been full <laughs> of belly laughter <laughs> and messing up. So we're good. I, I think they're willing to fire me now. <laughs> it has been a good time as it always is. It is. So thank you for supporting AMA Air and for being a member of AMA. We would not be here without your support. And in the words of Chris, it's time to get flying.